Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> yeah, pull it up. Yeah, a yeah. little bit closer to your face. Right there. Yeah, okay. that's perfect. <laughs> well, actually, I, I've been out of data, as I told you in the car. I'll mm-hmm. slide that over to you. you. By the way, if you want any flavor in your life besides, like, water, this oh, is I community Gatorade. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. No problem. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I've been out of data, and I've been forced to listen to the radio. Mm-hmm. And it's it's weird because the radio just gets stuck in your head. Mm-hmm. Pop music is like, it's almost like pop music is designed to just be stuck in your head. Yeah. And they play the same eight songs I agree. over and over. I've only been listening to it like four or five days. And yeah. I'm, I already know like every song on the radio right now. It's yeah. kind of ridiculous. I'm actually in the same situation because my, for some reason, my radio is not connecting to my phone. So I've been forced to listen to the radio too. And it's driving me insane. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that's okay. You, you get what you get. You my know? buddy was explaining the other night. Something with the pop industry, mm-hmm. and because I mean, like you might assume Taylor Swift, mm-hmm. you're thinking, okay, Taylor Swift writes the song. Maybe she has people like do the video for. Her. Mm-hmm. My friend was explaining it's like a whole team of writers to ghost write her lyrics for yeah. her, and then, and there's there's one dude who's like a multi, I believe, billionaire who has written like majority of the songs for pop music in the Dang. last X okay, amount of years. Okay, which is why they would all sound the same. Yeah. yeah. Right. Have like the same tune to it too. Like what? What is that guy? What value is that guy adding? Like what skill does he have yeah. that's so like desired by yeah. people? You know. And why don't we know of him better? Yeah, right. He told me like, his name. I looked him up. Uh-huh. I looked up his net worth too, and I, yeah. I believe it was like four billion, something like Dang. that. That's how much our president is worth. Holy cow! Think about that. Yes. Yeah, but uh, true. take it off my shoes. I'm getting comfortable. Yeah. But me uh, too. actually, these perks are pretty comfortable. <laughs> I felt suffocated, but uh. <laughs> Oh, where was I going with that? But yeah, yeah, it's like a whole team of writers. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, the music video's got to be editors, yeah. directors, which I, I figured all that, but like the actual production of the audio quality, he said it was just like a whole team. Dang. So then why is she famous for it? Because she has the voice? She's, the way I see it is she's like the brand. She's like okay. the head of the brand. Okay. She made it to so this she's point. She's a public figure. Yeah. Okay. She's like the representative yeah. of her music. She creates it, but like, yeah. I wonder how much control she has over oh, like everything. That's true. Because then she doesn't really have control of like, over what kind of music she gets to write. I would assume so. I don't know. You think? I would assume she's she has enough control to be like, I don't like this song, I'm not releasing yeah. it. But like, I would assume she has a lot of control. But I wonder how like, how much is not her. Yeah. In, in this yeah. process of making her own music, you know? Yeah, like, does she have a say in, like, what the song is even about? Yeah. Or does she just sing it? I would assume. I feel like she would have a say in it because she's really passionate when she sings. Like, I'm not a Taylor Swift fan, but she's incredibly passionate when she sings about it. I'm so. just extremely curious, like, pop specifically, mm-hmm. what the process is like. Yeah. I'm kind of curious who even listens to it anymore. I mean, it get, I mean I don't if you look at the YouTube person. views. Yeah. YouTube views are in like the yeah. hundreds of millions, like every every pop song, yeah. really. Maybe because it's catchy and gets in your head. Maybe I I know little kids. Little kids will always yeah, like this show. But they'll just be like repeating mm-hmm. those pop music and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I love Bruno Mars. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And like that, what is it, Uptown Road one? That one's super popular. Yeah, though. true. Which is like country but it's actually just pop i thought that song i don't know why the word i want to use to describe this song which i don't i don't use this word a lot but i mm-hmm. think that song slapped it slapped really for like a few days you think so okay and then it got really old really quick yeah oh very quick i never was into it but it's cool when those genres kind of like collide mm-hmm. like i saw at least the way i saw it was like yeah. i mean not necessarily rap but like kind of like r&b mm-hmm. mixed with kind of pop in a way in country yeah. obviously See, but everyone hates that right now. Like, everyone, well, okay, I can't speak for everyone, but a lot of people that are into country music don't like country music anymore because it's, like, combining with Like pop. pop. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, so all of my friends that I know personally that are, like, into country music, it's only old country. Okay, absolutely. You absolutely. Know? I don't know. That's just a fun fact. <laughs> Rascal Flats, kind of. Mm-hmm. Well, Martina a McBride. little bit older, yeah, yeah. Trying to think who I'd are say some like older. Eric Church, Garth Brooks. Oh, Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw for sure. And Faith Hill, of course. Okay. Shania Twain. Like 
super old school. Where does Carrie Underwood fall in that? Oh, everyone loves Carrie Underwood. She's like the Taylor Swift of country music. So Yeah, she kind of is. <laughs> yeah. But before Taylor Swift opted out of country. Yeah, true. Went all pop. Oh. She turned on us. Yeah. On us? Are you a country fan? No. <laughs> she still turned on me. I still felt it. <laughs> it still hurt. It still hurt. <laughs> I, I really, I used to like her. She's had a boyfriend for the past two years. Has she? And apparently he's been like out of the spotlight. I, I don't keep up with celebrities mm-hmm. much at all. Yeah, I'm but Kardashians. Apparently, <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's like the epitome of, uh, I don't know if you want to say everything that's wrong with pop culture. I, I don't know what I think because apparently Kim Kardashian has been breaking, not breaking people. I don't know like the necessarily the right wording for this, mm-hmm. but she has somehow gotten involved legally to oh, get these yeah. people that have been charged. Yeah. Like, she's got her legal team with her, like, helping people that have been charged and have been in prison for a while. Wrongly convicted. Wow. She's gotten so many people out, too. Like, honestly, I was kind of... I'm kind of impressed. I was critical of the Kardashians until I heard that. Like, after I heard that, I was like, you know what? I'm probably oblivious to a lot of what the Kardashians are actually doing. I mean, you got to give them credit. One of those Jenner girls, (laughs) I mean, they're like... Multi, or she's the first youngest billionaire Kylie. ever. Yeah, Kylie, mm-hmm. like her her lip balm or cosmetics <laughs> her or lip something. Balm. What is it? Yeah, it's just Kylie Cosmetics. But Kylie Cosmetics. Mm-hmm. It's kind of she's got a huge brand, and she just partnered with Ulta Beauty, which is oh. huge for her. Which is why she's like so big. Ultra Beauty. Oh, <laughs> Ulta. But yeah, no, Ulta. <laughs> it's like, do you know Sephora? No. Okay. Well, it's like a very big beauty store. Okay. That's okay. where everyone gets their makeup from. So. Yeah. Oh, so distribution. Mm-hmm. Look at Kylie go. Yeah, seriously. Honestly, I mean, they're great businesswomen. Like, shoot, I support them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't watch, like, the TV or anything because I'm not really into the celebrity gossip, but I support them. Besides the James Charles thing. I was into that for a hot minute. Explain this to me. Oh, I don't know if I could. Like, it's a huge, long thing between him and Tati, another makeup guru. Okay. But they're both YouTubers. Do you know who James Charles is? I am familiar. I don't know much about him, but he's he's yeah. what is he transvestite? No, he's just gay. Okay. Yeah. And he's he's very very um I mean he does his own makeup. Mm-hmm. Like very and feminine he's so looking. So good at it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Is he like funny with it too? Like Oh yeah. I mean, he I don't know how to put it. He's just interesting. Like Really? Okay. He's funny, but he's also very knowledgeable like He's always got gossip. That's a huge thing. He's a very gossip girl kind of person, but I don't so know, he's, he's fun he, to watch. He's uh, there's a, a very strong element of like entertainment. Yeah. While you're watching him, and then also I I assume like the the hub of why you're watching him is because of makeup. Yeah, I mean if you're into makeup, you're usually watching him. Okay, absolutely. There's not really another reason to watch him, but I don't think I can market to women. I just don't get it. Yeah. Well, I mean, because of him like being gay and doing feminine makeup Uh which like okay i completely support like gay community doing makeup but they don't do it the way he does because like there's still like a very masculine side to them and with him it's very feminine Mm. so it like women that are watching him and also doing the same tutorial it like actually fits their face a little bit more if that makes sense which, okay, kind of. Uh, which I feel like is another reason why he's so big. But that's he's surprising. Just very entertaining. Like if you would have told me like ten years ago that, hey, there's going to be this guy who's worth multi millions of dollars, one of the biggest celebrities in the world, biggest mm-hmm. YouTubers in the world, and what he does is he's a dude who teaches women how to do their makeup. Yeah. I would have been like, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know. I mean, he's not the only one, but like, there's Mario. But it's kind of impressive. Yeah, seriously. Mm. Except he's lost like at least three or four million followers because of the whole Tati situation. Really? Mm-hmm. It was just this huge scandal, and I would definitely go into detail with you about it. But it's like you would just have to watch the videos, which his video is like 45 minutes long, and hers is 45 minutes long, and I'm sure you're not that interested <laughs> yeah i don't care that much. <laughs> yeah so i think i've probably heard who he is oh i'm sure because i'm familiar with his name and i know he's like the makeup mm-hmm. guru yeah especially recently too i think it's because what? of that because yeah, of the scandal the scandal 
Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize it was negative publicity whenever I was hearing about it, mm-hmm. but I was became familiar with his name. So it was negative for a while, and I feel like he kind of definitely made it into like a more positive thing. Like I honestly, being one of his followers, like supporting him, I definitely was not interested in James Charles anymore, any of his videos, anything to do with them. But after he kind of explained himself, mm-hmm. then you like saw both sides of the story, kind of thing. And I mean, you don't exactly know what's true and what's not, but right. I feel like. I have a lot more respect for him now that he's done that. So, wow. I don't know. Yeah. Good for him. Making yeah, that. seriously. I've always wondered what it'd be like if you had to. You had all this negative publicity on you. You're a mm-hmm. big star in whatever way, and like yeah. how you would handle that. You know. Seriously, having how to like that prove yourself with you. too. Yeah. I would hate that. That'd be a lot. Like if someone, I'll just burn that bridge. I don't care. Like, but if you're that huge and like your entire career and life and publicity and everything is on the line, you know what do you do? On the bright side, it's probably not just him handling the situation. Yeah, he's probably definitely. got PR professionals. Oh yeah, doing something. Definitely, I but could agree to that. It'd probably be overwhelming until you like you're like okay, I'm just gonna hire the right people to help mm-hmm. me like not screw up my reputation forever and yeah. ruin my brand. Yeah, seriously. But I don't know. A lot of jobs were on the line when all of that happened. So. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, this YouTuber craze is awesome. It's really interesting. Yeah, seriously. I mean, because the YouTubing community, I guess you could say, has become so huge within the last couple of years alone. Yeah, right? And now that's everyone's, like, sole income. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... Go them. And if you ask little kids what they want to be when they grow up, a lot of them will tell you, I want to be a YouTuber. Yeah, seriously. That's cool. Seriously. It's crazy how much our generation, our lifestyle now has changed just over the years, like over even a five-year gap, Mm -hmm. like compared to like other generations too, like. I don't know. I feel like our age specifically is like very close to the cutoff of people that are like really influenced by YouTubers. Yeah. Like I feel like five years younger than us, they're like yeah. really into these YouTubers. Oh yeah, for sure. I only watch like three pa- people maybe and mm-hmm. that's like one video in a month span. Like right. I am not into that. But like my little cousin, he is obsessed with them. Absolutely. And watches like 10 a day. Like I don't know how he has the time for it. But yeah, they're very influential. I mean, you get into, like, one type of blog or vlog, then you start watching other people's vlogs and mm-hmm. then other people's vlogs. Mm-hmm. And I know, like, Jake Paul is notorious for oh, – well, he actually, goodness, uh, yeah. Team 10 had, like, a concert. And if you look out Team into – th- So Jake Paul basically started uh-huh. this. One, he has, like, a mansion with all these people living with him. I don't know a ton of details on this. Yeah. I do know that it seems that the people switch up a ton. Like, people switch up all the time in this house, and, like, who's a part of Team 10 is always shifting. Oh, really? So, I'm, I'm assuming people, like, get in and then get out, and mm-hmm. maybe they get in to, to kind of, like, support his name or something. Oh, yeah. But he, he almost endorses them. So, I, if I had to guess, he's probably taking some form of commission. Oh, Because he's yeah. making these people famous based on his brand. That's true. And they're getting their foot in the door, so, I mean. Absolutely. So, it's, like, a win-win. Yeah. But it's that's weird. Like, if you're, like, building friendships off of that. Yeah, I've heard he's actually a very disliked youtuber but everyone loves him because of that reason i think the younger community likes him Mm -hmm. and the older community i know a lot of like the older community of youtube does not like him at all yeah like uh like the youtube celebrities like ethan klein which has like the h3 podcast Mm -hmm. uh do you know who cody ko is yes cody ko is so fucking funny (laughs) really yeah yeah Yeah, you're right absolutely Yeah. yeah so cody ko he uh he got in this big conflict we might have watched this video. They probably, yeah, yeah, with Jake Paul. That's Absolutely. why I stopped liking him. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like And, like, Jake Paul's like, hey, I'm going to go confront mm-hmm. Cody Ko today. And yeah, he, like, sneaks up on ridiculous. him. And he's, hey, I forgot what he said exactly. But he's like, oh, he's like, hey, man, why you bully people? Mm-hmm. And then Cody Ko's, like, caught off guard. And he's like, what the fuck? He's like, hey, I, I don't remember his response. But you could tell he's clearly very uncomfortable with the situation. Yeah. They both looked like it. Oh, yeah, like absolutely. Like, Jake Paul, I feel like, could have handled that so much better. Absolutely. And been a little more, like, direct. Like, if you're going to, like, confront someone about it, like, have confidence in it. He did not have confidence in it. Yeah, and I And so agree. I feel like it was just a very awkward situation. It was the typical guy response <laughs> yeah. to conflict. Yeah. It's like, 
hey, I'm going to go confront this guy. I'm going to go tell him he's a pussy. I'm going to mm-hmm. tell him he's I'll a bitch. Dad. I'm going to go kick his ass. Yeah. And then I'm going to spit on him after or whatever. And then, yeah. like, they actually show up. And it's like, you realize, you realize in those moments, nobody, no guy, no girl, I don't care how tough you are, you don't like conflict. Oh, yeah. And if you no do, does, there's something psychologically fucked up with you, yeah. most likely. <laughs> I would agree to that. I feel like you can get more comfortable in the eyes of conflict, but... I don't know. I don't think you yeah. should be craving I mean, there's conflict. There's those people that like pick a fight, though. Yeah, true. You know, so a lot of dudes like to get drunk and fight people. True. I feel like I know a ton of girls who have that ex-boyfriend. Oh yeah. You know, like. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. I can name off like five right now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's like my ex used to just get drunk and then fight people. Mm-hmm. I'm just like. Okay. I feel like they used alcohol as an excuse to fight people. It's ridiculous. You know. Honestly, I will say the baddest people, the best fighters, they're not getting drunk and yeah. seeking out fights. Yeah, it's not a thing because you don't have technique if you're drunk. Yeah, I don't care who you are. You do not have technique if you're drunk. Yeah, especially so, you get to that certain level. Mm-hmm, but you do have the confidence for it because yeah. then you have something to rely on when you're sober. You're like, oh, I was just drunk. You know, and then you can avoid that conflict. So I don't know. That's just my point of view on it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's cuz I guess whenever you're drunk, conflict becomes fun. But then you're you're not thinking rationally. You're thinking with yeah. anger and sometimes it's like forced anger. Yeah. Like I mean, you literally go out with like the malicious intentions of seeking out a fight. And yeah. that's like your crew's thing. I completely believe that um drunk words are sober thoughts. I completely believe that. Really? Because someone will talk big and bad all the time. At least coming from a girl's perspective and like in situations that I've been in, they'll let everything bottle up mm-hmm. and then they'll get drunk to let it explode. Okay. I bet some people cope and with then it they that freak way. Freak out. So I will say I've I've said some uh I don't know, I've said some exaggerated things whenever I'm drunk. More so like whenever I'm sober I don't exaggerate things to like make them unrealistic, but I have before. Yeah. More so, like, in high school, mm-hmm. but, like, whenever I'm drinking, I will, like, say things that I don't necessarily mean. Yeah. Or or you'll say things, like, out of out of emotion, and you're, like, feeling it in that moment, but you're, like, you've yeah. never felt it before. Yeah. Before that moment, like, I don't know, maybe you'd be angry at somebody, and, I don't know, you feel that emotion so heavily, because it hits you at 100 miles an hour, just overtakes your entire being at some point, and, uh you're not thinking rationally. You, you think that's how you feel, yeah. and you convince yourself in that moment that's how you feel, but, like, it, the alcohol helps you get there. Yeah. And it helps enrage that <laughs> like anger. Courage, yeah. But uh, ultimately, yeah, right, right. <laughs> but ultimately, uh, that might not actually be how you feel. Yeah. I know. I agree with everything you're saying. Well, do you want to talk about your car accident, driving through <laughs> the mountains? Cause that was quite the switch, but yeah, yeah I right? would. Every single time I'm in Colorado, and I take on the responsibility of driving or just being in the passenger seat mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, yeah. be, just be driving through those mountains. I know you grew up with it growing yeah. up in Colorado and whatnot, but I, it scares me for that yeah. exact reason of driving off a cliff. Yeah, which is exactly what I did. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, my dad growing up, he actually, he always, when I had my permit and everything, even when I didn't have my permit, he always had me drive on the interstate so that I get comfortable with it because you're in the mountains. There's a cliff on each side of you. Like that's very intimidating alone. And then you're scatterbrained and you're a little nervous. And then that's when something will happen. And so I got very comfortable with it. That that's my route that I took every single day to work. I would rather drive on the interstate than I would in town. But this current situation, I was driving to work and I was working three jobs at the time. And so I was working at Target Ulta Beauty (laughs) And, um, Ulta Spin City. <laughs> that's <laughs> the only reason why I know. Okay. Okay. Um, actually I guess it's not the only reason, but anyways, so I had all three jobs at the time. I had just gotten off one of my jobs at like, I think it was 2 AM and I had to go into my next one at six. And so that's I was ridiculous. Yeah. What are you doing to yourself? I know. I just wanted money. I was a broke kid. Like I wanted to be able to pay for college. Uh-huh. And so I was saving all up in that year or two so that I could actually have something to pay for with college. Cause I don't want to be in debt. Like my sister did that and it was miserable on her and I didn't want to be that person. Yeah. Right. So uh, that was my goal anyway. And then that night, my friend Gail, she asked me if I would help her um, find her dog. And so we went out to find our dog, and I was looking in the bushes because we live right next to, like, a peach orchard. 
And so there was an irrigation divider box that they used. And I was over in that area looking through the bushes. And I climbed up on top of it. And my phone just slid right through my hands. And so I dropped my phone in this irrigation divider box, which if you don't know what it is, it's, like, covered with water. It's, like, completely full. And so I had water damage on my phone. Well, that was my only source to wake up in the morning as my alarm clock. And so I only had, like, four hours – well, actually, three hours to sleep, so I had an hour to get ready. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have an alarm clock to wake me up. And I don't care who you are. Like, you're not going to be able to wake up yourself in a three-hour period. Yeah, know, Especially when you're exhausted from working, like, a 12-hour shift the night before. And so, oh, um, you're ridiculous. I know. I know. You're it. crazy. <laughs> wow. I don't think it was a 12 hour. I think it was like an eight hour, but still, still it was ridiculous. Still, three hours of sleep to yeah. recover. Yeah. And then I had to work all day that day and the job after. You're a trooper. I had all three jobs that I was supposed to work. So I like threw all of my shoes in because I woke up at six o'clock. Right. My mom came in my room like rushing. She was like, don't you have to be at work? And I was like, crap. So. Well, you said rushing. So she, don't rushing, you, ha- don't you have to be at work? <laughs> Exactly. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so I threw all of my shoes in my car and I had to have three different pairs of shoes, like dress shoes, tennis shoes, whatever. So I got in the car and I was on the interstate and I'm late to work. Okay, I live 30 to 40 minutes from my work. And so I'm like hauling ass, honestly. Already late. Yeah. And so I'm going easily like 90 miles an hour at least. 90 miles an hour driving through the turns of the mm-hmm. mountains. Yeah. Mountains on both sides. Yeah. Cliffs on it's both not sides. It's super like windy, I guess. It's like kind of like a circle. Like it winds around this way, but it's not like windy all the way through. Okay, absolutely. So, yeah, I was doing that and there was a cliff on both sides. One like went into the valley and one went into the mountains. But there's, like, certain areas where it's, like, flat, like, the bottom of the mountain, and it's flat. And over here, it's, like, just a little plain or something. And so I was hauling ass, and I – it was still dark outside. And I looked up because – well, I had to scoot one of my shoes out of the way to make sure that I had all three pairs because that's, like, what, two, four, six pairs of shoes? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, what if I miss one, you know? So I, like, went to scoot one out of the way to make sure I had all of them there. It was, like, in your floorboard? Mm-hmm. Passenger seat Passenger floorboard? Seat, exactly. Okay, absolutely. And so I, like, turned my wheel when I did that because I'm exhausted. I've done I'm that before. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. like, you're holding up here and you're reaching. Yeah. Here. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so I was doing that. Well, when I looked up, there was a guardrail in front of me. And I was like, well, shoot, what do I do? Like you're heading straight onto the guardrail? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, like, I have two seconds to decide what I'm going to do. Am I going to go straight? Am I going to go right? Or am I going to go left? And literally, it felt like it was, like, a five-minute conversation in my head, but it was seriously, like, two minutes. Or two it's seconds. It's absolutely incredible how quick your mind works in those, yeah. like, dire in an moments. Instant. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you, like, you look up, one, you have to process that you're in danger, and then your mind just, like, mm-hmm. shoots Channels on. Channels into some other, like, form of thinking. Yeah, honestly. right? Yeah. So Survival. Seriously, that's exactly what it was. Wait, so what's on your right, what's on your, what's okay. straight, and what's so left? So, on my left side, there was another car, and it was, like, slightly a little bit higher than me, but if I were to swerve, I'd head straight into it, probably. Okay, absolutely. That was, like, in my mind, going I would 90 head into them. Mm-hmm. Plus, going 90. Plus the momentum of exactly. them going 50, what 60, knows, whatever. Who knows if they have a child in the back seat, um, where they're headed. You Are know, you I thinking about all them. this in that split oh, yeah. second? Oh, yeah, in those two seconds. Woo! like. I'm like, what if they have a child in the back seat? Like, there might be a cliff on that side. You can't really see anything because there's guardrails. So I was like, there might be a cliff on that side. I'm assuming so. And I was like, well, if I go right, there's a mountain. And I'm not injuring anyone else if I'm going into the mountain. I could possibly stop myself because I know if I break, I'm still going to go straight into this guardrail. And I know it's going to, like, impale my car. And it's like the most definitely- noble two seconds of human <laughs> existence you. i've never well it's crazy <laughs> well thank you I i'll drive that. off this cliff so i don't hurt the person well i didn't it, know it was a cliff but oh, okay. but yeah i would rather take that chance than run into someone else and drive them off a cliff so you intentionally drove off the road yeah okay absolutely well yeah i like swerved my car into the mountain because Skirt. i decided i could go uphill a little bit stop myself and then i could get back on the road drive back around reverse whatnot you know so I decide to go into the mountain and not thinking that there's a guardrail for the reason. Um, I hit a little a little divot and my car caught onto it just perfectly. When I tried to correct, it flipped my car up and I went on two wheels and I cartwheeled all the way down. I don't know how long I was spinning for. Oh, wow. But I 
my seatbelt was on me and it completely like ripped off of me. Like the thing, I don't know what it's called, but that holds the seatbelt was yeah. completely like ripped out and shredded. And because of the impact, I had like gash wounds across my body from it. Yeah, it was crazy. But so I woke up, I got knocked out. I remember rolling and losing control of the wheel. And I was just like, you know what? There's nothing I can do at this point. So I just covered my head because I was like, my head and my heart are like the most important things in my body. Right. And so mm -hmm. I just covered my head. And then I remember my water bottle and my shoes were the only thing that I kept in my car because I kept it very clean. That was my baby. I had it paid off for like three weeks. I had my car paid off for three weeks and it was my first car. I bought it myself. Oh. I had a really good friend that owned a dealership and he helped me out with a really awesome deal. It's like, got to get my first car. Anyways, I'm still salty about it. <laughs> but yeah, so. Three weeks later, you crash mm -hmm. it. Total it. Yep. Oh. Three weeks after paying it all off and i only had it for like three months like i did uh -huh. not have it long at all yeah and so so my car goes up on two wheels i'm covering my head and i'm like i don't know what's happening next but i guess we'll see and i don't remember anything after that i remember waking up i look over well actually i woke up it's still dark it was dark outside when i got my accident and it's bright outside the mm -hmm. sun's in my eyes and so i'm like crap what just happened and so i have to roll myself over on my stomach which by the way i'm still in start or er, starvation uh survival mode uh -huh. because like all of this adrenaline is going through my body at this point the car's stationary at this point yeah is yeah. it upside down or is it well i'm not in the car i got you got projectile flown, from the car flown from the car at uh, what point like midair i i don't know I Did was you knocked out, out at that point, yeah. No. I don't know if I blacked out because my mind, you know how your mind kind of shuts those things off, like a childhood trauma or something, it yeah, kind of closes off? Well, I don't know if it was that or if I got knocked out. My nose was broken, so I'm assuming that I got knocked out. Uh-huh. But, so, yeah, so I woke up, and I'm laying in dirt on the mountainside, and I roll over onto my stomach, and I see my car, and it's just crumbled in this little ball. Oh. And I was just devastated. And so I see, like, parts of it flown everywhere. There was a chunk of metal that flew next to me, which is important. Um, but, yeah, and I was flown right next to this big freaking rock. So, like, that could have been even worse than my situation already was. And I look around. You can't see me from the interstate. So I'm about 30 feet above my car, like, on the mountainside. It's a very incline hill. And you still can't see me from the interstate. So you got to be noticed. Mm -hmm. You got to get somebody's attention. I don't have a phone because I dropped it in water the night before. And so. Oh, my goodness. I don't even have shoes on. Like. Oh, wow. Because yeah. so, you were reaching for your shoes and that's why mm -hmm. you crashed. Okay. Yeah. Wow. To make sure I had them all there. Yeah. Woo. So. Um, uh, what was my next part? Okay. So I'm on this mountain. I see my car and it's crushed and I'm crushed. So I was like, well, I need to stand up. Like, I got to walk to the highway or the interstate because hikers can't see me. You can't see me from the road. I'm stuck out here. I have no way of calling. Even if I did have a phone, it's not like I'd have reception out there. Uh -huh. And so I was like, my only, like, thing to do is to walk. And I touch my legs and I look at my hands because I'm wearing leggings, black leggings. Uh -huh. And I'm drenched in blood. And I was like, I'm losing a lot of blood. I probably broke my nose. Like, that was my only thought. I was like, I just broke my nose. I'm fine. Didn't think it could be anything with your yeah, legs. exactly. It's not like you physically think something like that could actually happen to you, you know? Uh-huh. And so I was like, well, that sucks, but I am losing a lot of blood, so I got to get to the interstate. So I try to stand up, and my entire kneecap completely just shifts to the side. Yeah, and I fall back down. And I screamed fuck as loud as I could. I was so pissed off. Was I was the worst so pain of all of this? It was incredibly painful. That wasn't the worst pain, though. Okay. So uh, I what was did like, you do? well, did you army like, crawl? Well, I, I stood up again. I stood up five times. I don't know why I remember that, but I stood up five times. I think, like, the last three times, that metal rod that had fallen next to me, it was, like, the frame of my window in my car. And I used it to, like, kind of as a cane to, like, prop myself up and to stand up and put my weight on it. But it was so flimsy that it would just bend, and I'd put weight on my leg, and I'd just fall back down. So I tried five times, and then I was just like, that's not working. So then I tried um, army crawling to the interstate, and I had to, like, physically pick my knee up because it was so, like, tender at that moment that I couldn't even move it. Like, I couldn't move my leg up. I just had to pick it up, 
and then I would pull myself up with my elbows in the dirt, in the glass, like everything. I'm surprised I don't have scars on my elbows, honestly. But I'm crawling up this freaking mountain, and it's an it's a nice incline. Like I'm 30 feet above my car. Like every step that I'm like scooting myself forward, I'm still sliding because there's no traction. It's not like it's a trail. Like it's all loose loose dirt, and so. I finally get to a point where I can see between two little hills, like, a l- cars driving by. But they're so far in the distance that they wouldn't be able to hear me or see me because mm-hmm. I would be in the rear view mirror. And even then, they probably wouldn't be able to see me. But so, And I could see the very tops of semis. And so I see a little cop car drive by between these two little hills. And I'm screaming as loud as I could. He didn't have his lights on or anything, but he was just, like, scoping at the area. And so I, w- I had this metal rod, and I was, like, waving it in the air as loud, like, screaming as loud as I could, trying to get his attention, because you can't hear me over the cars. It's an interstate. And so he keeps driving, and I was just like, man, that sucks, but, like, I just got to keep going. I was, I was probably out there crawling for about 30 minutes, I'd say. Yeah, and so then I see his car reverse, and I was like, oh, thank the Lord he heard me. He didn't, actually. But he had to scope out the area because a semi driver had seen a piece of my axle attached to my tire. And it was a very, fairly large chunk of metal, you know. And it's sitting on the side of the road. Semi drivers are so used to driving, they don't usually see stuff like that left overnight. It's 6 Uh a.m. And so someone was decent enough to call it in just to, like, be sure. And they didn't have any reports of an accident in that area. So they're like, well, we'll just send someone out there to scope out the area, which was what he was doing. And so... He comes out, and he's walking the wrong way, and I'm screaming at him as loud as I could. He finally, like, heard me and started walking over towards me, and he's, like, kind of walking the wrong way. And so I was like, no, over here. And he's like, he's like, just keep screaming. Like, I'm coming to you. Like, I'll find you. And he walks around this hill, and he sees me up here, so he gets up to me. And he was like, don't worry. An ambulance is on its way. Just stop moving because I'm still, like, crawling to him. I'm like, I'll meet you halfway, you know. (laughs) And he was like, don't worry about it. An ambulance is on its way. Like, they'll come and they'll help you out. And I was like, no, I don't need an ambulance. I had just turned 18. Or I guess I'd been 18 for a while. But still. And so I was like, I pay my own bills now. Like, I cannot afford an ambulance. I had three jobs so I could get myself through school, you know. And so he was like, well, I was like, just call my parents. They'll know what to do. They'll take me to the hospital if it's bad enough. I probably just broke my nose. Like, it's fine. Well, he could see me better than I could, obviously. And he's like, just don't worry about it. Like, just stay still. Like, Neverlands is on its way, and I was like, well, take me to Community Hospital instead of St. Mary's. I don't know why I could know the name of my hospital, but, yeah, and he was like, just relax. Like, I've got you. I think I was annoying him at that point or something, and so then uh, he just, like, holds me in his arms until the paramedics get there, and which I want to thank him so badly to this day, and I vaguely remember what his face looks like. I don't remember his name. I'd have to go into my medical files and find out, which I should do that, but Maybe he's hitting on you. Oh, I'm sure. That's what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to cut on me. <laughs> exactly. Um, but his, he was bald. He just got divorced yeah. recently. <laughs> He's like, you know what? This is my opportunity. Yeah, she's having a rough day, too. Like, let's just get some lovings. <laughs> exactly. That's This is what <laughs> that what fortune cookie that I got two weeks ago <laughs> was telling me about. Exactly. I'm sure that's what it was when it came down to it. Um, But, yeah, so he's just holding me, and the paramedics get there. And it's not like they can put me on a gurney because I'm still on this incline. And so he's asking me, he's like, do you know your parents' name? And I I couldn't remember. Like, I knew what it was, but I couldn't say it. He's like, well, do you know your phone number? Do you know your parents' phone number? I couldn't remember any of that. I knew what my hospital name was, but I couldn't remember that. Interesting. Did you remember your own name? I think so. Okay. I can't remember, but I think so. Um, But so somehow they got to the hospital before I did because – I think he might have gotten it from my license plate or something. I don't know. But so, yeah, so the paramedics get there and they're like, well, we don't have a granny. So they get one of those like plastic flat boards and they bring it out to me. And because I'm on this incline, they're like, well, we got to flip you over and carry you on this board. And by that point, like he's huddling or cuddling me and like I'm my adrenaline's going down because I know like I'm OK at this point. Like I have found help. Like I'm OK. They'll take it from here. My trust is in their hands kind of thing. And so by that point, my pain is starting to kind of rise up. I'm thinking about my trying knee. trying to actually feel it. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about my knee because, like, that's the most tender at that point because of all of the pressure that I had just put on it. But they flip me back onto this board because I'm on my stomach. They flip me onto this board, and my entire back, my legs, my hips, 
everything just like completely ached. Like I could not describe what kind of pain that was. And that's worse than you trying to stand up and falling. Oh yeah, it's ten times worse. I'll tell you why. Like I'll I'll tell you what all I broke, but. Yeah, it was the worst pain I've ever felt, and I would not wish that upon my worst enemy. And so they bring me on this board, okay, and because they're sliding, because they can't grab traction, like when they're stepping down this hill, they're sliding. And so I'm bouncing around on this board, and that hurt so bad. Um, But they get me in the ambulance. I don't remember much at that point. I just remember being in the emergency room. I They drug me up. I do remember... I have like a little tiny memory of being in the ambulance and I was cracking jokes or something. I was like, I'm going to be late to work. Like my boss is going to fire me, like stuff like that. Um, But so I get into the emergency room and I'm laying on this bed and I'm watching them pull like chunks of like glass and dirt and metal out of my knee. Oh, because you're not drugged at this point. Well, I'm, I'm drugged. Like, I'm not feeling it uh-huh. at all. Like, I was actually really into it. I was like, whoa, that's cool. I can see my <laughs> bone and my tendons, you know. Um, but, yeah, and because apparently a chunk of metal had cut and sliced through my knee. Another one actually did it to my ankle, too. Yeah. Um, and I'm, like, trying to stand up on this knee. That same one. Uh, sorry, I'm, like, yelling. Uh, but so. No, you're cool. I'm oh, good. <laughs> So I'm watching them as they do this, and they're like, well, we're going to have to take you into the emergency room, like, ASAP. And I was like, well, no, like, wait a second. My best friend's on her way because she saw a news report, and it had a picture of my car, like, crumbled. And you could see, like, my seat covers and my tassel in the window from the year I graduated. And so my mom and my best friend's mom are best friends. And, like, they have been best friends for a long time. Like, we grew up next door to each other, so we grew up best friends kind of thing. And we were in a they huge fight. They put the pieces together on their own. Yeah. Yeah. That's so impressive, So honestly. my best friend's mom saw the post, and she was like, Allie, is this, is this Kayleen's car? And so she's like, well, send me a picture. So she saw it, and she saw the you think she said it in window. that town? You just said it's so nice. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> is this Kayleen's car? <laughs> I think that might be Kayleen's <laughs> car right there. What do you think? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Um, but yeah, she's like, mom, we need to go right now. Like that's her car. And so sh- her mom called my mom and she's like, yeah, get on your way. Like be here as soon as possible. Cause she's got to go in. And so I was like trying to make the doctors like hold off. I'm like drugged up. And I was like, no, like, let me stay here. I just got to see my best friend for a second and let her know I'm okay. And they're like, well, we can't do that. So they brought me into the surgery and it was literally like, we completely passed each other, like right within a second. Like she had came in as soon as I was going out. It's a yeah. dramatic moment. It was a very dramatic moment for me. I will I will die with that memory. <laughs> but, yeah, so. Adorable. I, <laughs> thanks. So I get into the emergency room, and when I got my wisdom teeth taken out, I didn't get put under. I just got numbed, and my numbing came off halfway through. This is like a little flashback story. And so my numbing came off, and I felt everything that they were doing in my mouth, and that hurt so bad. So I was like, this time I'm getting put under. Like, I'm going to count down as far as I can and fight this until I fall asleep. I don't know why, but I remember the the number 23. I don't know if I was counting up or what. But I counted to 23, and I looked at one of the nurses that was scrubbing in my um, – surgery and it was a dude and I was like I can fall asleep to that face and I knocked out and I didn't wake up till like later that night and I wake <laughs> I up could and I fall I'm, asleep to that face yeah <laughs> I was like I can fall asleep to that face and I wake up and I'm like in my room there's flowers all over the window seal and I was in the hospital for a week I had wait uh, you woke up from a coma no sure, no oh. I was not asleep for okay a week. I'm sorry okay. so I woke up that same day but I was in the hospital for a week. Absolutely. With, like, rehab and occupational therapy and everything. And so uh, – It's quicker I was, than I would have thought, by the way. Yeah, honestly. Uh, I was learning to walk again, and I had to walk with a walker. That was super embarrassing. But, yeah, I was determined to get out of the hospital because I'm a very hard-headed person, I guess. Uh-huh. Um, I know you probably don't expect that, do you? But – so – I was in the hospital for a week. My injuries included I broke my nose like I had predicted. I got a major concussion. I tore my MCL, which is why my knee popped out of place the way that it did. Uh And I dislocated my ankle. Um, I had that chunk of metal that went into my knee and another one that went into my ankle. The glass completely shredded my foot. And so I have scars all over this foot. Um, Ow, sorry. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> you bang it up on the t- 
<laughs> yeah, that's the one that's I heard. Me. I've got Bam! <laughs> um, <laughs> Broke it again. <laughs> By the way, it's really life. fragile. Yeah, that would happen to me, honestly. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, so I dislocated both my hips. I broke my back, my spine in three sp- places, and I completely demolished a vertebrae. They just had to like completely take it out, and then they used it like they crushed it up and used it to fuse my other two together. So I had like two wow. titanium rods in my back and eight screws. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, and then let's see. I broke all the cartilage between four of my ribs. Like it like was like crumbled, so they kind of like rubbed a little bit. Yeah, that sucked too. That took like the worst to heal. And then what else did I do? There was so much more. I don't know. I dislocated a bunch of things. I had like That's cuts so everywhere. Much. Yeah. My back, my entire back, I have a picture of it, but it was like shredded because of glass. Because when I hit, I skid. And so I skid across all those rocks and the glass and everything. So my back was like shredded up. Uh-huh. And so, yeah, that sucks. Um, I was in and out of therapy. I had therapy every other day for three months. And the only reason I had to stop was because my insurance didn't cover it. Well, then it was a new year. And so I... Like, my insurance rebooted again, so I was in therapy again for another three months. So, a total of six months every other day. And so, I had to quit all my jobs, obviously, because I was in no position to work because I could barely walk. I was on bed rest for a couple months. Um, I had to use that stupid walker. I hate so much. I still have it, but I used to use it to walk. I I was supposed to use it for a couple months, and I got, like, three weeks in. I was like, I'm not using this thing. Wow. And so I, like, threw it to the side, and I was, like, I was telling my doctor because I had to see monthly – or, no, it was weekly visits with my spinal surgeon, which that was a lot of money out of my pocket. But I had weekly visits with him, and I got to the point where I threw it to the side, and I was like, just watch. And he's like, I do not recommend you doing this. And I was like, just, just let me do it. And I walked to my walker, and he was like, that is incredible. Yeah, it was like angels singing. <laughs> uh, he was like, well, I know you're stubborn enough that you're not going to use it, so I guess you don't have to. And I was like, awesome. So can I go horseback riding? <laughs> and he was like, no. And so actually I, I ended up doing that, but <laughs> that's okay. Wow. But, yeah, so then after that I was just kind of like, you literally only have one life. Like that was kind of my second chance. And so I got like religious for a moment there. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to do whatever. I that want. would take your mind to some weird places. Yeah. That seriously. really would. Seriously. I like, I don't know. There was a moment in there where I was on bed rest and like all I could feel was pain. And like I was constantly doped up on Oxycontin and Vicodin and like diaz- diazepam and which is like a muscle relaxer narcotic. Oh, wow. great. Yeah, it's fun. Um, but I was like doped up on all of this. Like I was not in the right headspace. All of my friends had just dropped me because I wouldn't party anymore. And so I had. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, because I couldn't party anymore. <laughs> like I that literally like... was in a car accident. Yeah, I had some shitty friends back then. Wow. Yeah. So I literally had no friends except my best friend that was at the hospital. And we were in what a, a place. big fight. What a and place to be And she was the only in. one there for me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that sucked. Cause I would I wouldn't DD for them. Like, they uh, dropped you because that is. Yeah. Oh, that's not. You gotta even the face worst part. the loss of your friends. Mention. I mean, it was inevitable. I mean, mm-hmm. you would assume, or you yeah. would hope, you would yeah. hope. Yeah. Yeah, you think they support me? They True did when colors. I was in the hospital. Uh-huh. Like the entire week that I was in the hospital, they were like visiting me all the time. Like I always had guests, and then the second I got that out, they were like, oh, "Okay, she's okay again," and then she just they all just assumed that. Like, I just didn't go out anymore because I didn't want to. And so then they dropped me. Like, they didn't see what, like, the process I was going through. Like, every other day, physical therapy, like, trying uh-huh. to walk again. And they just up and dropped me. But the worst part with it all was um, there was a news report about my accident. And when my um, cop had asked me, like, how I got in my accident. Your man. Yeah, my man. <laughs> my man. The, the recently my divorced daddy. cop. <laughs> Um, yeah, so he Hey, babe, just cuddle with me. <laughs> cuddle with me. This will be on our wedding day. I mean, Honestly, this will be on our wedding photo. That would be quite the story. Let's take a selfie I real quick. I would not be opposed to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so he had asked me, like, how when he was, like, holding me and everything. And I told him that I was moving my shoe out of the way. I might have mixed my words around or something. I don't know. But in the news report that he had, like, given in his report, uh-huh. it said that I was tying my shoes while driving. And so... 
that That's made it. <laughs> yeah, it said I was tying my shoes while driving. And it was this huge feud, like, everyone on Facebook. I say there was at least 400 comments. People probably all, bashing you. Mm-hmm. That's exactly Well, that's what dumb as fuck. You're so dumb for yeah. trying to tie your shoes. People were telling me to kill myself, that I should have died in Ooh. that accident. What if I harmed someone else? The, one the that internet me- is a mean place. You drove off a mountain. Yeah. And people are telling you you should kill yourself because yeah. of wrong, like, it, it, something that was not communicated mm-hmm. correctly to the news source. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And what really drove me insane was the fact that um, someone had said, because I'm, I'm in the hospital, I'm an emotional, I'm a, I'm a woman, you know, I was a teenager. I'm a woman. Yeah, so I'm emotional, and I'm reading every single one of these comments. And there was one oh on there goodness. that said, she should have died, what if she, sh- sh- what if she harmed someone else in that accident? These are public profiles? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was like, what if I harm someone else? I literally, in that two seconds, remember, I drove into a cliff because I didn't want to hit someone else. And I was just like, if only you knew. Like, People are fucking mean. Yeah, and was so, your name in there? Like, first and last name? No. No, they okay, kept good. that information out, which was good. But I had all my family like supporting me and my best friend. Wow. And they were all commenting on it. Um, a really good friend of mine, he's like my brother, uh, Levi, he commented, and he's not like an emotional person, like he doesn't hug, he doesn't say I love you, but he commented on every single one of those like 400 posts and was like, you don't understand her situation, like you don't know what you're, what she's going through, like you don't understand like the process of what she did, like so that no one else got it. The internet is a mean yeah. fucking place. That yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah, and luckily I had broken my phone, so I couldn't see it because uh-huh. I was looking off my mom's phone, and she was like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to take my phone back. You don't need to see any of that. And I was like, no, I have to. I, like, got pissed at her. You're just on like, it in just reading these. them. Ha ha, <laughs> yeah. ha ha, I don't care. <laughs> no, I was, like, crying. I was so emotional in the hospital. I guess I was, like, crying wow. every 10 minutes, like, Thank you so much for all that you do, like, to the nurses and yeah. everything. My brother from um, Washington, D.C., he had called me just to, like, check up on me, see if I was okay. And I was like, thank you so much for, like, caring enough to call me. Like, I really appreciate it. I know you got more important things to do. Yeah, I was I was a train wreck. But, yeah, so, like, when I was on bed rest, all my friends had dropped me. Everyone in the public, I hated me, like, wanted me to die. Wanted so you to die. Like, I was like, what do I do? You know? And so I just, I I'll tell you myself. what you do. At least now, this is how you make a claim to fame. <laughs> would you like to hear this yes, proposal? I would love to this hear it. This is a business opportunity. Are you okay, ready for it? Let's hear it. Okay. So you got in this big car accident. You broke both hips. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there were two hips Dislocated. until now. Dislocated two hips. Yeah. Broke your spine. You got, you got metal rods in your spine now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you become a torque instructor. A and what? a twerk instructor. <laughs> you learn how to twerk. You do it professionally. Deal. Then you start instructing other girls on how to twerk. There and that's go. like your claim to fame. That's your like success story. Yeah. And it starts off like Look at really. Look my back the way that I can Exactly. Now. <laughs> I got metal rods in here. Yeah. You can do it if I can yeah, do it. Yeah, honestly. So you, uh, you start off with like a really dramatic video that, that um. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe maybe like the audio of us talking about oh, it right yeah, now in the background. Yeah. Be like, and really I have metal scene. rods in my back. And then you're you're like, I don't know, getting ready for your day in the morning. It's really dramatic. Mm-hmm. Really motivational music is playing. <laughs> and then okay, it, and then like it busts out to like a like an eighties workout theme. And then oh, you start yes. twerking it out. Yes. And the camera's like shifting around to like <laughs> Doing three sixties, yeah, <laughs> and you're just getting down, yes, shaking your like, booty. I'd be like one of those, um, like those workout videos, you know, yeah, yeah. like Zumba, you exactly. know, except twerking. And we'll Do start, they have those? we'll I start like selling so DVDs already. together. There we go. And We're then that'll be your catchphrase. Money. Be like, I have metal rods. If I can do it, you can twerk it. <laughs> if I can twerk it, that'll you be can my twerk motto. It. I mean, I might, I might tweak with it a little bit. Find uh-huh. a better one, but <laughs> okay. yeah, that'll be my motto for now. Tweak the twerking. Yeah, there we go. I'll tweak <laughs> the twerking. <laughs> but yeah, that's my Well, it's, it's great to go into business with you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Good Thank you. business with yeah, you. Yeah, first, first official handshake <laughs> yes. right there. It was documented. <laughs> it's happening. Oh, it started sure. here like, on the pod. I'm locked in. <laughs> You're locked in. Oh, no. <laughs> Can we get that in writing, actually? <laughs> I'm going to put you under pressure on, on camera and make you uncomfortable to the point that you have to sign it. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Uh, what if I sign someone else's signature? Does Can you it do count? that? 
If you if you sign something with your you were like opposite hand, so yeah, like so I'm a righty. Okay, so, so you're a lefty, and you uh-huh. sign something with your right hand. Uh-huh. Do you think you could like technically get away with saying that it's not? A credible yeah, well, signature. I feel like it'd be sloppy enough, though. Well, no, because if you're just scribbling, like most signatures are these days. Yeah, right. Just put a K and, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Now you're. But on it was to still something. you, so yeah. it, that's intent. Yeah. I don't know how that would work. I don't know how that work either. But they'd have to prove it was you first. Well, I mean, if we're on camera, then there's that. But if it was off camera. Yeah. They can't prove it's me. And then you could just write do my, your normal signature and be like, yeah. that's nothing close to it. Yeah, you can prove that, like, this is my left hand. And I'm what are how you tell signature fraud? Because I feel like mine is pretty different. Like, it's like, how much effort do I want to give this signature? Yeah. Am I going to, like, actually try yeah. or am I going to scribble? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what it comes down I to. I have so. to try. I don't know why. But really? I have to try and I have to spell out my entire name. I'm it only 23. Look pretty, I've but. already gotten lazy with my signature. <laughs> Already gotten lazy. Well, I'm only 20, so I've got a couple years until you got I get some lazy. years for, like, the world to shit on you a little bit. I feel like I've, I'm kind of already there. Mm. I mean, been to the bottom and back. So. You, you're 20. You, you should be dead inside within about two years. Oh, okay. There we go. So Hopefully. now I've got a timeline. Wishful thinking. Okay. Wishful thinking. <laughs> Hopefully it's two years. We'll exactly. see. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Drake line. Are you ready for it? Ready for it. Everybody dies, but not everybody lives. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> I loved it. I hope that hit I home was spot on. right yeah. here. Almost, like, made my eyes water. Like, I... Oh, fan them down. I really appreciate that. it. <laughs> there you go. But, yeah. That's crazy. I can't imagine. I've been in one car accident, and it was, like, nothing. It was a very trivial event. Pretty much, I, I kind of, like, looked down at my stereo real quick, real, real quick, mm-hmm. and it was raining out, and then this car was stopped in front of me, making a left turn, oh, yeah. completely stationary, and then I broke, mm-hmm. first reaction, again, it was wet, so I hydroplaned and just hit the back of them. Not too no bad, way. not too much damage, yeah. um, but so she, like, claimed, car accident. yeah, and I was young enough to where, fortunately, fortunately, I have the parents I do have, mm-hmm. and my dad actually handled everything for me, so, like, Good. Wasn't that much of like a stress on my life or anything, and it was unintentional. I'm a pretty decent driver. I've never, I have a ticket on my record, but that was because I took the fall for a friend. Yeah. But um, I don't have any tickets or anything. Fortunately, knock on wood. But uh. Um, oh, there's no word. Oh, chair. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Knock, there you on, go. knock on the chair. Well, now there's two. We just jinxed it. Sorry. Well, I knocked. Yeah, but you can I do what you want with your life. I, Doesn't I, that count? Yeah. I'm not counting it. Okay. Well, then. I don't need fine. your bad karma. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> okay, continue. Well, you inter- you interrupted me. Yeah. So. I had that effect on my bad. Oh, that's a terrible effect well. to have on people. You're a poor listener and <laughs> you're a selfish conversationalist. I know. That's what I that means about, about myself you. the entire time. Yeah. That's what well, you asked. <laughs> I did ask. And it was a great story. It was, was a great thank story. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, that's I want to hear about yours. Fuck what I was going to say. I got a cooler thing to say. Okay. I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. So uh, that's the cool thing about this podcast thing is you like it gives I get the opportunity. I created the opportunity to give people an opportunity. I'm creating opportunities. I made the opportunity for myself. And OK, never mind. No, I. Oh, he was about to rap. I, He's got a new I was just song. trying to over word, overuse the word opportunity. But no, I <laughs> through creating this this okay. podcast platform, I give people an opportunity for me somebody to sit down and listen to them mm-hmm. and they just talk about whatever and yeah. i find i find what i have found through this is that if you give people the opportunity to be heard to actually be listened to which is a more rare thing than you yeah. would actually come to realize yeah i mean you could argue that that's more prevalent amongst males or women like i would i would argue men but but with that being said just for you to have a voice that's going to be heard inevitably by me because I'm here giving you my full undivided attention and also potentially whoever the fuck else wants to listen. And what I have found is that people are fucking fascinating. People are cool. If you take the time to listen to somebody, they will tell you incredible things. They really will. That's really cool. I never looked at it from that perspective. I figured like you gave us a chance to talk about ourselves without being narcissistic about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Because yeah. I'm I'm asking the questions. I'm yeah. genuinely interested in what you yeah. have to say, which is cool. Because then you feel a lot more important. Absolutely. Honestly, especially like when it's documented like that, you know, like you feel 
you feel proud of yourself that like you went through the struggles that you had, you know, for that sure. You think the way that you do kind of thing for sure. And I, I grew up with like ADHD. So I was actually notorious or infamous, whatever word you want to use back in high school for being that kid. I have no joke. I would be mid sentence talking as passionately as I am at this point in time. And then I would just zone out. I would just yeah. zone out, make conversation because I love that. my, my, I wish my I had that train <laughs> of thoughts was so dominated with like, it was very more, it was more sporadic. I feel like I was a late bloomer with being able to like focus my attention. I yeah. feel like I was a late bloomer with that. But, um, yeah, back in high school, I just zone out mid sentence. I was a terrible listener, but this has forced me to get pretty deep. I'm not the greatest listener, yeah. but to get pretty it's I think exceptionally you're better, above average at <laughs> better than I was, better yeah. than I was, and the incentive is that I look like an asshole if I zoned out. If I was like, oh wait, I wasn't paying attention, mm-hmm. you know, like I would look like an asshole to everybody watching. So yeah, that's true. That's true. It like puts you in your own place. Exactly. That's cool. So I my like my motive is to not be an asshole. That's the only reason I okay. care about what you have to say. Oh, so is that why you have this all set up? Just to so not be an asshole. You're to prove to the public that you're not an asshole. Exactly. <laughs> well, now you just gave your secret. So now Ooh. everyone thinks you might be an asshole. Everybody already thinks I'm an asshole. Oh, okay. Because if you actually take the time to watch one of these podcasts, you'll realize very, very quickly that I am a total piece of shit. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm a terrible human being. <laughs> I, I believe it. Yeah, you listen Honestly. to Jordan's subjective perspective, and you quickly realize it's like I don't want to be friends with that it's guy. It's Jordan's perspective. Exactly. No one I'm a narcissist. Yep. I'm a narcissist who pretends that I care to listen. You know all the right questions to ask. That is another thing. You get better. You get better <laughs> with asking the right questions, and and uh, and with like you realize the once you kind of like get the spark of mm-hmm. curiosity about somebody else's life, it's like you can get more and more curious. It's okay, almost like yeah. contagious. Like once you get that kind of thinking going, I guess mm-hmm. you'd call it a form of thinking, mm-hmm. you get the ball rolling on that, then it's almost more contagious. It's like I'm taking the time to listen to you mm-hmm. about your story, and then I'm genuinely engaged, genuinely doing my, the best of my ability to listen to what you're saying, and then that just that stimulates curiosity and questions about what – happened in that particular life event or the opinions you have on the world or whatever it may be that just that uh that that way of thinking that curiosity comes up like sporadically like in the moment yeah you're good at thinking of questions to ask right then and there but it's because you're a good listener well thank you yeah Yeah, i mean you worked hard for it so here you are it's been a cool experience it's been a cool experience yeah it's been a cool experience to get to know you well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Do you mind if I rip that Julio? Yeah, you sure can. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which, by the way, I'm distributing this podcast. By the time this comes out, it'll be, like, long uploaded. But I'm getting this on, like, different platforms because that's what I've been lacking on this podcast is distribution. Okay. So that's pretty cool to make, like, a little step that way. So yeah, I'm excited. that's awesome. I'm excited. Yeah, look at you. Now you're making, goal, like, steps in your career. Like, you've already gotten to this point And, like, I mean, I've seen some changes. Like, it looks awesome. Thank you. And now you're perfecting it. Like, seeing how you can make it better each time, which is really cool because it takes a lot of work to put into something like this. Yeah, it really does. So, honestly. A lot of sacrifice, a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't, I've never been, like, a super big drinker and going out and stuff, but mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you hold that in high value, then a lot of time I got to just take out to uh, skip out on the bars and mm-hmm. do a podcast instead yeah. or whatever, or edit or whatever it may be. Yeah. It's not, like, a huge sacrifice, but it's... Yeah, and it's not like you're missing out too much, like, if you're doing a podcast because you get to actually see into like someone else's mind and i enjoy this a lot more than the bars Mm -hmm. and i wake up feeling a lot better good yeah yeah you don't have a hangover the next day yeah man so that's good well depending on what you're doing but (laughs) yeah true i I do drink on here every once in a while oh yeah yeah really i didn't know that okay drunk podcasts are fun oh i bet they are (laughs) not as fun as high podcasts oh no because then you don't exactly know what you're true gonna be thinking of next so So let's get off the topic of me and talk about something different Okay. I actually, I have other things in my phone. Okay, I want to know about this. I like to ask girls this kind of question. Okay. Do you have, like, a creep test when it comes to dudes? A creep test. Like, you analyze a person, and if they have these certain qualities, then, like, it makes them a creep. Yeah. Or I guess not, qualities isn't the right word, but, like, those certain little kinks in a person that makes it's just it's really fascinating to me to imagine myself as a female and like to know that i have to take the necessary precautions to like avoid 
weirdos because it's yeah. a very real possibility of yeah. of something potentially bad happening. Yeah. So like to it's to kind of like set up your guard a little bit, uh-huh. it's super necessary. Yeah. As a female, it's definitely a struggle, but it's the same for guys, honestly. Like especially with like how our world's changing now. Um, but I would say partying is very difficult. Like there's a reason girls all go to the bathroom together. I I mean, a lot of it has to do with like, do I look good? Like, let's have a conversation. What do you think of this guy? Like, but a lot of it has to do with like, you don't want to leave someone alone in a club or in a bar or just at a party because like, who knows if someone's going to spike your drink or if like someone wants to pull you aside because they want to ask you a question and said like, next thing you know, you don't know where you're at and. Yeah, but um, being a woman, I feel like growing up, especially, like, if you have a very strong female figure in your life, it gets easier because, like, you kind of grow up knowing how to address certain situations. So, like, you know not to stand on the street alone when it's, like, past midnight. You know, like, not to drink out of a cup that, like, no one's handed to you because, like, other people in your life are letting you know of these situations and, like, what could happen if you do. Um, so I feel like it's kind of like second nature at this point. Um, but as far as a creep test goes, I would say the way they look is very important. Like if they have like crazy eyes, like you just know, like if they make you feel uncomfortable the way that yeah. they're looking at you, like if they're like undressing you with their eyes or they're just like very intense or something like that. You just like if you get the heebie jeebies from it, you just know to walk away. Like it's just kind of like. I don't know, like a reflex or something like that. I don't know how to word it. I'm not thinking of the right word, but moving on. Um, But, yeah, so then also how they talk to you. Okay. Like if they have very in-depth, like, questions, like right off the bat. Not like a good conversation, but, like, the type of questions that they're asking you. Like if they're very informal about, like, let's say where you live or something cliche like that, you know, where it's just, like, a basic question. Um, But – if any of those, like, kind of things, like, spark a red flag, that's kind of when you know to, like, step away. I don't know if I should talk about this on camera because now I'm giving away all the secrets. And then those creeps out there can, like, perfect it. Ooh, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but usually if they are, like, a psychopath or something, they already got those things figured out. They've got you figured out as a woman. Like, they're very passionate in studying you as a person before you even know them. So, I mean, I've seen – I've watched Ted you. Bondi. I've seen Ted Bundy, like, <laughs> so, and it's always the people that you never expect. Like, I know someone from my hometown in Colorado, like, I never expected them to be, like, the psychopath kind of person until I see in the newspaper that three women were dead. Like, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that you are never. You know somebody that murdered three women? I, I mean, I know of the story. Not exactly the person themselves. Okay, but okay. I went to school with them, so, like, it's still, like, That's crazy. You know, insane. you see them in the hallway. It's not like you expect them in five years or even two years to have murdered, like, these people, you know. But, yeah, I don't know. It's – as a woman, like, you you kind of have to always have your guard up because you never know what you're going to expect. You could be seeing someone for, like, six months, and then all of a sudden they switch up on you. I mean, okay, not to, like, bring up Ted Bundy again, but, like, she was married to him, stuck with him because he influenced her, like, that it wasn't him because he was that good. And then she didn't find out till like, after the entire trial that, like, it really was him. Like, she had the hunch, obviously. I mean, she reported him, but she didn't actually know until he admitted it. So, I mean, it's kind of like the same. The end of his life. Yeah. That's. Yeah. Wow. True. Dang, it's already like yellow. <laughs> it was green. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. I, I'm just impressed. <laughs> um, you shouldn't be impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's not a thing that you should be proud of. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Did you just do this? Did you do one of those? What? I, I wipe my nose. Oh, I thought what? you like flexed out. Oh, no, I was like, no. you did not. <laughs> I'm not a tool. I am not a tool. <laughs> That's good. At least I try not to be. I probably do some tool things. Yeah. I, I showed up like to it. my job interview today at Olive Garden in mm-hmm. a suit. In a suit? Yeah, because I already had a Look presentation this morning and I dressed up for it. I was like, honestly, I'm already wearing a suit. Why not just keep wearing you a suit? You did have dressy pants on. Yeah. I yeah. had a feeling. Yeah. That's, I mean, honestly, though, it makes you stand out. I always dress really freaking nice at, like, way over the top at interviews because you're going to be the one person that they remember. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you want to stand out. So, I mean, yeah. Might as well. Already wearing it. Might as well. Honestly. I probably wouldn't have done it otherwise. But, like you said, I, I literally showed up, talked about soccer, mm-hmm. and then he's like, all right, cool. I'll hire you. Wow, you talked about soccer. You talked about soccer and traveling Europe. Does he like soccer? Was yeah. It, yeah. Oh, okay. Because he, he's like, well, what of previous jobs have you worked? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like. I, I I I was serving and then I refereed and he's like oh where do you referee and then he started talking about his kid and stuff oh. like that so I listened and I was like oh are you in soccer he's like yeah I played semi pro I'm like all right, cool thank that's God that's the best that's why like the way I see a resume is I put like talking points of mine because mm-hmm. I, I like I've done a yeah. little bit of martial arts I could definitely hold the conversation on yeah. it so I put that on there like, and you're my, really good at that so I mean well I'm not good at it but I I'm well, I know you enough. are in this sense. Like, you, you have an idea of what you're going to talk about. Those are your little topics. Oh, points, okay. I'm fine. Yeah. 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 Kind of in the same concept. I yeah, guess. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. If I mean, if, if they see those on there, and I mean, it literally happened today. If they see, I didn't turn in like a resume, but if they were to see on my resume, oh, he played soccer, which I have on there as well, because mm-hmm. I think it represents a part of me, or podcast, or what's my other talking point? Is like martial arts. Like if they have any experience in any of those three things, then that's gonna hit home. If they yeah. don't, then I'll start up a conversation about something else, or I'll answer their questions as charismatically as I can. Yeah. See, with my resume, I, I'm like a wild card. Like with okay. anything that I do, I try and be spontaneous and like different and stand out. Like standing out is my thing because it separates you from everyone else. So like on my resume, I have like that I'm a lumberjack because that's always the thing that I get asked about, and then I just talk about it, and then I'm not nervous because I get. So nervous. You're a lumberjack. I was. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You Actually, chopped after wood my for a living? Because I couldn't get a job. Like, I could not get a job at the time because I was, my doctors were all trying to get me to sign up for disability. And so I was, like, waiting for those papers to go through. So then I was like, well, I need an under-the-table job. My brother was like, come work with me. So then I became a lumberjack. So instead of, like, a twerker, you could your inspirational video is going to be at-home <laughs> lumberjack workout videos. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make it look hot. Don't You're gonna worry. You're going to be the P90X of lumberjack <laughs> workouts. <laughs> yeah. So that's becoming like a thing in the fitness community, like <laughs> b- hitting a hitting a hammer on a tire, like a big tire. Have you seen those workouts? No. Yeah, those are like pretty popular. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I guess I don't watch enough workout videos, but. Yeah, just like these like ripped dudes will like just pick up a hammer, throw it over their head and bang on the tire just repeatedly. Wow. It must be, I, I, I don't know like I guess why it's, it's so like popular. I a lot of. Forearm strength. Probably, probably a, probably a lot, lot of them. shoulders, a lot of triceps, and a lot of back. A yeah. Lot of back. And probably some core, too. Yeah. I mean. Full body workout. That's the one thing that sucked about my lumberjack job. I had to quit because of my back. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I was, like, just a couple months out. I was barely off bed rest when I got that job. My dad was super, like, uncomfortable with me doing it. But I was like, Dad, I got to make money. That's crazy. Because <laughs> I'm a workaholic. Uh-huh. But that's okay. Work, 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 work. Uh, that's gonna be my theme song when yeah, I'm twerking right. as a lumberjack. This is this is kind of a. Uh, I have like a little conspiracy veer- theory about that. Uh, oh yeah. About that song. Okay. Okay. So that it. song came out at the same time that that other song. It's like you ain't gotta go to work, 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 work. Did it really? Work. Yeah, they came out like within months of each other, and they were is on the radio right? at the same time. Uh-huh. Yeah, they were on the radio at the same time. So like, two songs. On the radio, we're singing, I mean, literally just repeating the words, uh-huh. work, 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 work. I was thinking, I'm like, what if the <gasps> American economy your- was, like, starting to fall down and they needed some way to, oh. like, subconsciously reach the people <laughs> of the United States and boost up that GDP yeah. a little bit? Illuminati confirmed. Work, 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 <laughs> work, work, work. Next song, you ain't got to go to work, 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 work. They're uh-huh. telling us to work. Or they're telling us not to work because you don't got to go to work. You ain't got to go to work. They're fighting each other, which brings back to your, like, little theory earlier about the whole Taylor Swift thing. What if it was the same person that wrote the songs? And he just kind of had, like, a a brain moment. It was just like, I am not doing my best. I'm kind of out of work, so let's just use it as a theme song. There you go. That's my conspiracy theory. (laughs) It's also weird that – Every song on the radio has to do with love, and every song or, ever has to do with love. Yeah, right. So, like, I wonder if these songs are written. Which, it, I mean, it it it's prevalent, but I wonder if it's written intentionally because it's so relatable. Yeah. Have you ever thought about that? Like, what yeah. if what if these songs? I, it brings are, the most emotion. Yeah. To right. Someone like females and males. Like, I mean, I'll I'll hear like a love song that I don't know. Maybe it's more applicable to my situation. I'll Some be like Keith Urban song. You know what? 
I totally get what they're talking about. Like, I'll relate with it. So I wonder if that's what they kind of, like, go for. Because then it then becomes your song. Yeah. It gets, like, it's, yeah. it becomes, like, close to you. Yeah. You're, like. You, like, almost get jealous if someone else listens to the same song. Like, I showed you that song, you know? <laughs> oh, that, too. Yeah. That, too. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, honestly, that was a thing that I hated as a kid because I used to love to sing. I used to love music. I still love music. But I was just like, why are they all about love? I was at the, that point in age where I didn't really know what love was. Mm-hmm. So I was like, why is this a thing? And that's when, like, nobody knows what love is. You know, honestly, nobody knows. Honestly, no one's got it figured out. Um, but so then that's when, like, all those songs came out about just, like, how you live and how you grow up. You know, I mean, for me, it's country songs like like you, this isn't what makes you country or this isn't like how you reflect like the rest of your life. And then those songs started getting really popular. And then that's when rap came out. And there, well, that's not when rap came out, but like there was a lot of love songs about rap. And then there was a lot of stories, especially with like Eminem being a huge influence about like how someone grew up. And then I feel like it kind of, like, oh. set a diverse way. Of kind of like writing a story. Yeah. Like, okay, and I'm then following. it was separate from love. But so. still mainstream. Yeah. Mainstream yeah. radio music, it's always about love. That's true. I agree to that. Always about relationships. Yeah. Dang. Hmm. I know. I, I was talking to this one girl, like, two, three years ago, and she was, there was a there was a really popular song. I can't remember. Oh, it was, uh, this is kind of off topic, but she it was basically a song Oh, what was what was the what was the sound of it? It was. I never knew I was starving till I tasted you, or oh, something. Like, and that it, was Taylor Swift. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. No, no, it wasn't Taylor yeah. Swift. Not the song I'm thinking of, at least. I tasted you. I don't know what oh, it was. Oh, it wasn't Taylor Swift. <gasps> Who was that? I don't remember. But proceed. With yeah, it's a, it's a catchy song. It's yeah, a catchy song. Yeah. But it, this I'm gonna it, have it was interesting because this girl it seemed like she was. At the time in her life, it seemed like, and I'm not calling her out right now. She was, mm-hmm. she was all right, but she, uh, it seemed like she was kind of like forcing that element in yeah. in life. Like it, she was like looking for a relationship, and she was kind of like trying to force it on me through that song. If that even yeah, makes sense, I could understand where you're going with that, huh? I never thought about it that way. I don't know. I just the There's way she's like, like saying that, it though. to me. She's like, she's like, I never realized I was starving until I tasted you. It just seemed like she was like. Calling it, you out through the radio. <laughs> almost, it seemed like she was... I bet you were flattered, weren't you? <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. I don't know how I felt about it. Okay. I don't know how I felt about it. Okay. I, I, I'm not, like, expressing... It just seemed, it seemed like she was trying to fill a void the way she said it to me. Yeah. That's the way I interpreted it, at least. Well, Who that's knows? probably Who how knows? she's getting to your emotion, though. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. You know, like, making... Because, I mean, every artist has a way of making someone remember their song and their lyrics. And if, like, they're calling you, I, I don't know how to put this, but, like, if they're trying to make it to where, like, you've got to think about it a little bit, or, like, it feels like it relates to you a lot more, then you're going to remember mm-hmm. the song like you were saying. Maybe that was just, like, her way of doing it. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Give her the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of songs like that, though. Especially. Relatability. Yeah. I would say in rap music especially because then someone's taking the time to learn those lyrics. Like, they have that one little, like, point in there that everyone remembers, and then they're so relatable to that point that, like, like you got to give them credit. Like, there's a lot of things that you don't normally think about, and then you see their perspective as, like, a rapper, like, how they feel about something, and it relates to you that you want to listen to the rest of the song. You want to know the lyrics, you know? Yeah, that's absolutely, how they absolutely. Themselves. And so then you're working so hard to remember And you know they're doing that intentionally. Oh, yeah. They're trying to relate. They're trying to relate to Yeah, there's so many songs. This is what confuses me. Is like there's so many songs about like heartbreak or like like just completely bashing on like their significant other or something like that. Like I'm I'm good without you or something like that. And they're in a happy marriage with like kids or stuff like that. Yeah, right. Have you seen that? Like that just blows my mind. That's I don't understand how that it's is. Relatability. Like, li- little Wayne will talk about like strippers and like how he's so happy to be a loner. I don't remember what song it was, but it was something like that. And he had a wife at home. Like he was happy. Well, Wayne's her. married. I, that's what someone told me. Really? I mean, okay. Wow. I should have probably went into but, more uh, research. About regardless, it, but regardless, yeah. there are celebrities that do that. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. And that just it's weird. I don't like I don't the know. idea of saying things I don't mean. Uh, like, yeah. Whether me it's too. expressing through music, like what are you really expressing? It's me not too. real. And then I'm to them as an artist because yeah, I'm like, right. it's disingenuous. they're just feeding me bullshit. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. You know, so I don't know. That's just my point of view on it. Relatability. Forced yeah. relatability. Yeah. 
honestly, if you want to wrap this up, it's up to you. It's like it's like an hour and ten in. Hey, look at us go. (laughs) Honestly, I would go longer. I'm enjoying this a lot. I'm just like I'm kind of. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. I'm not complaining when I say that. This is therapy, huh? Yeah, yeah. In a way, you know. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of at a point. I'm like, I kind of want to relax. If if you're cool with that. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, do you have any like thoughts in your mind? Any Um, last words? Any send off messages? Oh, I don't know. Well, I can say like just take a risk because after my accident and all the bullshit that I went through, like the one thing I wanted to do was get out of my town. I had no money. I had no way of getting there. Really? What made you want to get out of your town? I mean, everyone like bashing on me, all my friends gone. It was like, I wasn't like running away from anything, but I was just like, that's my moment to start over. Like, this is the opportunity I have to like completely like become a better version of myself. And so with absolutely no money and nothing to do and no kind of wipe the slate clean. Yeah. So I moved out here. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then I like how you made that as an opportunity. Yeah. Well, I was just like, well, I mean, I don't have any friends that are holding me back. I don't have a job that's holding me back. Like, uh-huh. I've always kind of wanted to learn what it's like to be on my own. And my brother, so I had some sort of family. My brother lived out here because he had just recently moved here. And being on bed rest for so long, it gives you a lot of time to think about what you want to do. And then that's when I became an esthetician. Right. And so there was a school out here, so I was just like, this is my opportunity. Absolutely. So, yeah, I just went for it. And here I am. And I love it. I love it out here. Good for you. I met some really cool people, so. That's cool. That's cool to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Because I I feel that call to adventure as well. Yeah. I mean, like, you get with your little clique and, like, you feel comfortable just, like, being with those people in your own little, like, bubble. It's so easy to feel that way as well. Mm -hmm. So easy. Oh, yeah. And so, and I love to, like, be out of my comfort zone. Like, I'm such a social person. So, I'm like, you know. uh, Sorry, I cut you off. No, you're fine. You go. No, I, I see my buddies back home and. A lot of them are just kind of on the same kind of thing, same Routine, city, and yep. I'm not hating on it, but it, it scares me. It genuinely yeah. scares me. I'm like, I want, I don't want to stay in yeah. the city I was raised in. Like, yeah. once I go back to St. Louis, I don't want to stay there. Oh, yeah. Like, There's I'll a call go back to and adventure. visit. Like, it's still always going to be home. Exactly. But. It'll always be there. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've lost my grudge with everyone. Like, I don't, I don't care about the friends or anything like that so i'm just like then you appreciate it more too yeah versus yeah, you if do. you feel trapped oh in that one goodness, location yeah. that you were like i love going home i couldn't get out of there fast enough but i love it now right absolutely i'm like i could live here i'm not going to but i could <laughs> i feel that <laughs> you know but yeah so i think like my ending words would be to just take a chance on yourself and trust like where you're headed in life and your journey call to adventure yeah everything happens for a reason because if it wasn't for that accident i wouldn't be here now and i wouldn't be with like the most amazing job of my dreams so good for you honestly kind of it i like i really 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 admire and like how you you kind of hit rock bottom Mm -hmm. and then you use that as an opportunity you're like i wiped this the slate blank Mm -hmm. it's a blank slate the only way to go up is up. yeah like what do i do now yeah and you want to change it's like i'm not going to try to conform to like my old life or recreate Mm -hmm. something I'm gonna I'm gonna make something else happen. Yeah. And I don't know what, but I I feel it. I yeah. Feel it. Yeah. I feel like I'm good in for the right you. Position. That's right awesome. Path. Thank you. I like I that. I appreciate it. That's that's Thanks. a cool way of thinking to be able to view that as an opportunity. I appreciate that. Thank you. It it wasn't always like that, but <laughs> it definitely is now because I took all that time to really think about it. So. Cool. It was all for something. We I guess. came out on top. Yeah, Look no at kidding. You. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm on top yet, but I'm definitely working my way there. Okay, respect. So we'll see. <laughs> respect. I'm on the right path anyway, and I'm comfortable with that. So. Cool. Yeah. Well, I, 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 that was an awesome send off. That was an awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Because I usually, I usually ask people just uh, taking into consideration there might be something else on their mind, and mm-hmm. I'll be like, "Hey, do you have any last words?" And people usually just stare at me, and they say, "No." Nope. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, no. You. Thank you. Thanks. Well, cool. All right. This is uh, this has been fun. One hour, eighteen minutes, something like that. So. Oh heck yeah. Oh okay, yeah. That's good. Heck yeah. yeah. We nailed that. Heck yeah. We didn't even have to look at Google. Exactly. Exactly. Because we have great conversation. Exactly. Boom. Mic or drop. they weren't thought provoking enough to where expensive. we needed something new. We needed like it to use Ooh. some sources. Ooh. We okay. weren't getting factual enough. One of the two. Okay. One All right. Two. I see where you're going with that. Hmm. Who knows? Different perspective. But regardless, it, it flowed well. It flowed yeah, well. I liked it. Cool. All righty. Goodbye. Well, thank you for having me on here.
Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Bam. Longest goodbye. <laughs>